Welcome back. This is Chris, my brother in Christ, Stephen. Hello. The date today is July 14th, year of our Savior, Jesus Christ, 2017. The title of this video is going to be Jehovah's Witnesses Part 4. Jehovah's Witnesses Part 4. And I just want to do a little bit of, uh, that's something that kind of has weighed on my heart a little bit is I had a, a person that did a comp, submit a comment on YouTube talking about what Bible did we use before the King James, you know, King James Bible. And there's information on that in the Bible study course, but I thought about it for a second. I'm like, you know, here's the deal. We have such a blessing here. We have a Bible that only needs to be reached out and embraced. And it's amazing that a majority of Christendom can't even do that. And as soldiers in God's army, aren't, Stephen, aren't we Christians? As, as Christians, we're soldiers in God's army, Absolutely. right? So we're a soldier. Now, in the armed forces, for example, the United States Army, uh, America, United States uh, of America has probably the greatest army in the world. Okay. Now we have basically, let me digress a little bit, but we have... We have the religious, we have the military, and we have the banking. Now, you have in Rome, you have the Vatican, which is a city within a city, mm -hmm. and that's the religious part of Babylon. Then you have in London, yes, London, England, or Great Britain, you have the city of London, correct? Mm -hmm. Within mm -hmm. London, and that handles, that's the financial mecca of the world. And then you have in America, United States of America, we have the District of Columbia, that's a city within a, a nation within a nation. They have their own laws. They don't pay any taxes. They don't have pay any taxes. And so we have, the United States of America has the greatest military. Now within the armed forces, they issue within the Arm, Air Force, Army, Marines, they're going to issue a standard infantry rifle, correct? And that would be, should, they, should it be all the same? Yeah. I mean, I mean, it would be absolutely moronic to have a hundred different infantry rifles. Now, an infantry rifle would be the M4, correct? It would be the M16A2. It takes 5.56 by 39 millimeter, I believe. Mm -hmm. uh, it has the same magazine. So, when you go into a combative situation, the person on your left, person on your right, conceptually speaking, is going to have the same weapon. Mm -hmm. You're going to say, well, Chris, they have a SAR, they have an M249. I understand there's other weapons other than, but there's a standard infantry rifle. So why, why do Christians, why can't Christians embrace the standard weapon? Remember, the word of God is the sword, and we should embrace the King James Bible, because it is superior than any of the other Bible translations. So that's just what has come to mind. It's amazing that a majority of Christians cannot just reach out and embrace the the weapon that God, the Word of God that God has given to the English speaking world. Chris Jehovah's Witnesses in their in their doctrine, their beliefs, they do everything according to the King James Bible. In other words, when you're on Wikipedia and we're going over Jehovah's Witnesses beliefs, mm -hmm. they use the King James Bible. So they use the King James Bible for their for to validate their position, but then yeah. they have their own Bible <laughs> to suit their own doctrine. So let me let me just start with a little bit of a recap on Jehovah's Witness. It was talking about Russell shifted the date for the end of the world from 1914 to 1915, then to 1918. And remember, he died in 1916, frustrated as a false prophet. We see that early Watchtower publications claimed that the Great Pyramid in Giza, Egypt, foretold dates for the end of the world based on the lengths of its passageways. When these dates failed, the measurements were lengthened to accommodate new dates. False prophecy upon false prophecy. Russell's successor was the judge Joseph Rutherford, 1869 to 1942. He moved the date for the world's end to 1925. Proclaimed that millions now living will never die and build a house in San Diego 
for the anticipated return of Abraham, Isaac, and yes, Jacob, and other ancient worthies. Rutherford taught that Jehovah governs his universe from Al Kion, A L C Y O N E, a star system in the Pleiades. Alcyon. Alcyon, thank you. Alcyon, a star system in the Pleiades cluster, and that black skin is a sign of the biblical curse on Cain. Now, one thing I do agree is the name Jehovah is the correct pronunciation of God. So they have that right, where a majority of modern-day Christianity today has it wrong, where they're embracing Yahweh, uh, Y-H-W-H. And I used to be a sacred namer. I was born in the sacred name movement, an offshoot thereof. But they've gone from Yahweh to Yahovah. And it's ridiculous because God is not the author of confusion. And the name of God is not some mysterious thing that nobody knows. And it's continually evolving. And, you know, I'm almost 50 years old. So in 50 years, it's been evolving. And we still don't know what the exact pronunciation is. Well, that is false because in your King James Bible, it mentions it right there as Jehovah, but not in some, some Kabbalistic or witchcraft uh, perspective where if you say it enough times, then you can speak the world into existence or whatever it is. Now, it's the name of God, but God did not want to put it, even though it's mentioned six to 7,000 times, I don't want to count it in, your, uh, in the Old Testament, you don't want to have it named every time because it's going to diminish the other passages. If you're talking about the firmament and the glory of the Lord and this creation and you're saying Jehovah, 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 it kind of diminishes everything else that the Bible is talking about. So God put that by his sovereignty in there. The problem with Jehovah's Witness is what do they claim that ears mentioned uh, the name of God... Um, they say that Jehovah is mentioned in the New Testament. Uh, well, they say it's uh, inserted 237 times in the New Testament. Well, that's not true. The name Jehovah is not found in the New Testament, the Greek New, Text New Testament. It's Jesus the Christ. And remember, Jehovah and Jesus are one, John 10, verse 30. So that's just kind of something to, to take in consideration about Jehovah's Witness. There's a, there's a lot of things... Um, that are in error. But the name of God is Jehovah. That's okay. There's nothing yeah. wrong with that name. But the mere aspect where they say they're Jehovah's Witnesses instead of saying themselves Christian shows that they do not believe that Jesus Christ is a part of the Trinity. They reject the Trinity. Mm -hmm. uh, and that it should be called... See, we call ourselves Christians because we're followers of Jesus the Christ. Therefore, we're Christian. We're not Judeo-Christian. We don't put Satanism or Judaism or Phariseeism in front of Jesus Christ. We're Christian. And he is... Uh, they, they said he is described as God's <laughs> first creation and the exact representation of God, but is believed to be a separate entity and not part of the Trinity. Jesus is said to have been used by God in the creation of all other things. Right, right. So that's, that's pretty interesting. So we're continuing looking at uh, Jehovah's Witness that they believe that Michael and Jesus are the same. Uh, we believe, uh, quote, we believe that the Bible teaches that Jesus carries out a number of functions for Jehovah God, the Most High. For example, in the Hebrew Scripture, he is referred to as Michael, now, Michael literally translated into the English means, who is like God. Jehovah Witnesses believe that Jesus Christ is a spirit creature, a super angel, the first creation, the first creation of Jehovah God, who prior uh, to coming to the earth as a man existed in heaven as Michael the Archangel. Jesus started out originally as the Logos, or Michael the Archangel, who then came to earth as the virgin-born son of Mary. He was a perfect, sinless man, but he was only a man devoid of all divinity. Jesus walked the earth as a man, becoming a Christ only when he was baptized. 
This is part of Jehovah's Witness doctrine. No Trinity, no resurrection, no cross. Jehovah's Witnesses hold the cross in contempt, feeling that it is nothing more than a pagan symbol used by apostate Christendom. But it represents the sacrifice that Jesus Christ came to, to atone for the fallen world. So if you have an issue with that, I'm not going to be here too dogmatic on this issue, but the bottom line is Jesus Christ is a part of God. He is the uncreated. He is not the created. And that's, that's a big deal. Now, when you're looking at what's interesting, when you're looking at the um, Jehovah's Witness Bible, which is the New World Translation, you, Stephen, you can see that? Yeah. Okay. Now, what's interesting is then you have the Holy Bible, right? And this is called the New International Version. And to, depending on which one, what's very interesting is, I believe, Stephen, you want to look up Luke 2, verse 33. Sure. Luke 2, verse 33 is pretty interesting. And Joseph and his mother marveled at those things which were spoken of him. Okay. Joseph and his mother... Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, now I'm looking up uh, Luke 2, 33. I'm uh, searching through here real quick. In your New World Translation, we see very clearly, if I can, the print is so small in these things, and if I can turn here quickly, Luke 2, 33 states, and it's, it's interesting, it refers to Jesus as an it. Uh, Luke 2.33, in the New World Translation, it says, And its father and mother continued wondering at the things being spoken about it. Now, it's talking about father and mother, Jesus' father and mother. You notice the King James Bible clearly makes a distinction between Joseph, who is not Jesus' father. Who is Jesus' father? Well, it's Jehovah, mm -hmm. or the Lord God, right. the Father in heaven, our God. Now, what's interesting is, you well, that's just a new world translation. Okay. Now, if we go to the Holy Bible, the New International Version, and I don't know, there's different ones out there, but if we go to Luke 2, Luke 2, uh, Matthew, Mark... Luke, I'm getting there. Luke 2, 33, what do we see? In your NIV Bible, it says, The child's father and mother marveled at what was said about him. That's wrong. Now, notice the correlation between the New World Translation and the NIV. They're both drawing from a corrupted text. Yep. Now, bear in mind, you have believers in Jesus Christ, Christians, that are using the NIV. I'm not saying you're not saved, but you're using a corrupted Bible. That's, that's what you're using. Yeah, you're using a butter knife instead of the sword. Why won't you embrace, why won't you embrace the standard infantry rifle? I mean, any armed forces it recognizes that there is that the issue of standard infantry rifle. Why won't you embrace the sword of God? Now, if you're looking at your NIV here, this one talks about, I'm reading in Mark 16, 9 through 20, it gets to, it has a line drawn across. I don't know if you can see this, but it has a line drawn across right here. A line drawn across right here. And what it says, it says the earliest manuscripts and some of the other ancient witnesses do not have Mark 16, 9 through 20. So it removes Mark 16, 9 through 20 in your NIV. Stephen, do you want to say something? Oh, do you want me to read it? Or? No, no, I'm just okay. saying what's interesting is um, very fascinating. So continuing here with the Jehovah's Witness, I thought that was fascinating when we regard to the New World Translation in the NIV. They're both saying the same thing when it comes to Luke 2.33, which means it comes from the God of this world. It doesn't come from Jesus Christ or Jehovah or the Holy, true Holy Spirit. Now, in your New World Translation, remember that they, they mistranslate and they say that Jehovah is found in the New Testament. It's not found in the 5,000 Greek or existing Greek manuscripts that um, 
correspond to the Texas Receptus that the King James Bible for the New Testament is founded upon. It says right here in your New World Translation, and this is, uh, what is this, Acts 9, verse 31, it says, I don't know if you can read it, the fear of Jehovah, the fear of Jehovah and in the comfort of the Holy Spirit, it kept on multiplying. Now, in your King James Bible, Acts 9, verse 31, what does it say? Then had the churches rest throughout all Judea and Galilee and Samaria, and were edified, and walking in the fear of the Lord and in the comfort of the Holy Ghost were multiplied. All right, talking about the Lord, but it doesn't say Jehovah in there. So that's just some, some interesting things here. So... Instead, we see that Jehovah's Witness hold, instead they teach, the Jehovah's Witness teach that at the completion of his ministry, Jesus died not on a cross, but on an upright stake. Christ's body was then laid in a tomb where it was, where it was disintegrated by God, totally destroyed forever. Jesus was then recreated by the Father. Before going to heaven, he materialized in different bodies, on different occasions to convince his disciples and others that he had really been resurrected Jesus returned to his father in heaven where once again he became Michael the Archangel folks this is eisegetical this is not exegetical this is eisegetical which means private interpretation mm -hmm. totally wrong totally doesn't go along with the Word of God big difference <clears throat> So continuing, uh, he will no longer be seen on earth in visible form, but instead rules invisibly from the heavens. And that's why you have the kingdom hall is that right now he's ruling invisibly in heaven and the Jehovah's Witnesses is the true church ruling on earth. Jesus, alias Michael, will always remain invisible to those on earth and can only be seen by the 144,000 selected Jehovah's Witnesses who rule with him from heaven. So these are the people in heaven. The 144,000 are the ones ruling and, and they can see Jesus equals Michael the Archangel. Should you choose to follow the current Watchtower prophecy of Armageddon, whatever that may be, and decide to protect yourself by becoming a Jehovah's Witness, you will find yourself in a unique two-class religion. Only the upper class, the 144,000 spoken of in Revelation, are guaranteed a place in heaven. They are known as the anointed. That's what they're known as. 144,000 are known as the anointed. Let me say that again. 144,000 mentioned revelation are known as the anointed. The Watchtower Society teaches that the vast majority of Jehovah's Witnesses constitute a secondary group um, referred to as the other sheep. So, I mean, maybe that could be put, uh, labeled as second class citizen. They have no heavenly hope but must remain on earth for all eternity. Once a year on the anniversary of the Last Supper, Jehovah's Witnesses and invited persons gather for the commun this communion like a ceremony. Only members of the anointed class who are alive today, about 9,000 worldwide, partake of the bread and wine. The millions of other sheep will not take communion. The other sheep are not in the new covenant and therefore have no personal relationship with Jesus Christ. Wow. How then do they hope to attain salvation? Now, my brother Stephen was invited to a Jehovah's Witness. He didn't really know uh, until, until after. He just thought it was some offshoot of Christianity. But he was invited to partake in communion. Now, let me ask Stephen, I'm going to ask you some questions here. Uh, when now you partake because you you were gonna yeah. just like they pass it to you you're gonna partake of it but when they were passing did they start with the bread or would they start with the wine they actually started with the bread okay when they started with the bread and they passed it around was anybody partaking of the bread no they were they would sit there and hold it 
and then pass it, but I didn't realize that at first, so I took some, and I ate my little piece, <laughs> and then when the wine was coming down, I noticed that everybody was just holding the glass, I thought, oh, they're going to drink out of it together, but they didn't. They just passed the glass from person to person to person, and I'm like, why isn't everybody, why isn't, why aren't people taking communion? I thought, well, maybe they've got ought against their brother, so they're, you know, that wasn't right for them. I'm like, okay, that's fine. I'll, I'll take communion. But well, at least that would be scriptural because in the Bible it says if you have ought with your brother, perhaps you should not partake in communion. Go and get right with your brother. Right. Well, <coughs> uh, but then I noticed that nobody was, and I asked the person next to me, I go, why isn't anybody taking communion? Oh no, no, it's just, it's just, it's just metaphoric. I'm like, what? So it's for the hundred forty-four thousand. Yeah. Is that what they said? Well, I mean, afterwards it was, yeah, that was, and I'm like. <clears throat> Man, I'm saved. I mean, I'm not... I've got Jesus, so uh, I came here to take communion. I mean, <laughs> but yeah. it was interesting that they did not take communion, and yet they had the bread and the wine there, and they did the whole service like you were going to take communion. But, but not one... So not one Jehovah's Witness partook the, of, no. of the bread or the wine or grape juice, whatever you want to do. Yeah. Okay. Not one of them Not did. Not one. Okay. You as a guest did because you're a Christian. You're like, hey. Yeah. So in that fascinating that here, here he's invited to a kingdom hall and they're passing this around because this is only for the 144,000 in heaven or for the ones that are in the corporation. That made no uh, sense. Why would you pass it around and not partake? Folks, this is not scriptural because the New Testament, when the animal sacrifices slash feast days were fulfilled, Jesus, as a New Testament custom, what did he do? He said, take eat, for this is my body. Drink, as this is, this, you know, as often as you will. Mm -hmm. And that's, that's an important thing. This is a New Testament ordinance. You want to call it a sacrament. That's, I'm okay with that. I Never. just call it an ordinance. Right. Um, but this, this is totally contrary to Scripture. Totally contrary to Scripture that you have people that are not partaking in communion, which is a sign of salvation. Isn't that interesting that they're partaking of something? So maybe they realize that they're not saved. And how do they pick? I mean, how do they, how, what, does somebody go, well, I'm anointed? I mean, I, it just, that makes no sense. I mean, they're the ones that are already in heaven, 144,000 But there's some here today on earth. They're probably at the Watchtower Society in Brooklyn. Oh, right. The real, it's a pyramid system, folks. Right. So at the very top. Multi-level. <laughs> yes, multi-level. Yes. I wonder where that comes from. It comes from the pit of hell. Um, so we see that an offshoot of the... Um, so the Jehovah's Witness are told that uh, you can't... Uh, say, are told that you can't look to Jesus alone for everlasting life. Isn't that so true to workspace religious systems? That's an offshoot of Roman Catholicism because you have to partake of the seven sacraments. You have to be a member in good standing, mm -hmm. a member of the corporation um, in good standing. And you never know um, how, how your works are going to be, uh, how much you know, works are going to be in your grace savings account. I guess that's what it is. And if you don't agree with what they do or what they say, they shun you. Yeah, yeah. So you, oh, if, uh, if you're... If you're uh, if you're Ask not questions. a member in good standing and you start questioning things, you could be disfellowshipped. I think that's what you, Jehovah's Witness, or excommunicated if you're a Roman Catholic. So we see that the other sheep have to earn their salvation largely by um, calling door to door, or that's recruiting. So that's the reason why they're knocking door to door to try to earn their salvation. Um, able to teach two opposite things simultaneously. And that's what's interesting is they'll say, oh yeah, we believe in Jesus. And we, oh yeah, you're saved by Jesus alone, but yet there's a dichotomy. Yeah, but they also believe that they have to earn their salvation. Mm -hmm. And they're not sure whether they're saved or not. They agree that the Bible teaches that we uh, are saved by grace, God's undeserved kindness, not by works. And yet the average witness, Jehovah's Witness, believes without the slightest doubt, unless he performs the works that are laid out by the Watchtower Society, the witnessing activity, going door to door, regular meeting attendance, and other things that are brought out that he or she will never gain everlasting life. Right. So basically, this is kind of a dichotomy. It's kind of speaking out of both sides of your mouth. Salvation by works, you have to recruit. Now, this is a deal. This is the problem with salvation by works is you have to, if you're trying to earn your salvation, number one, you don't have the Holy Spirit. Well, they don't believe the Holy Spirit. They believe it's a force that comes from the Father. But the Holy Spirit is part of the Trinity. 
God the Father, God the Holy Ghost, and God, uh, and then Jesus Christ. And the Holy Spirit comes in. That's why Christians, if you're a believer, the Holy Spirit comes in your body, which is the temple of God. And then you're filled with the Holy Spirit, and you prophesy, and you and you feel led. And remember, you're, and it corresponds to the Word of God because the Bible is a no private interpretation. But if you don't have that works based, you have to recruit because you're not dealing with the Holy Spirit coming in the temple because you're unsaved. That's sad. Yeah. but true and my hope behind all this is that Jehovah's Witness and Mormons and all these others that are trapped in these workspace religious systems and they marry into it and their families and then if you come out of it a lot of times the corporation will say oh no you can't associate with your with your family and that's really sad so we see that once the organ once in the organization witnesses attend five hours of meetings a week five hours five hour uh meetings a week in addition they are expected to devote many hours a month going door to door selling literature and giving <clears throat> and gaining converts striving always to prove themselves worthy of escaping god's wrath which is kind of very similar to roman catholicism folks at armageddon <clears throat> this is a very very heavy yoke Remember that all you have to do to accept the free gift is come to Jesus Christ. Right. Romans 3.28, Romans 3.28, Romans 4.5, not by works, yes, lest any man should boast, boast but by the gift of Jesus Christ. Amen. And Amen. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9. It's very important, folks, to come to Jesus Christ. Ephesians 2, 8 through 9 says, For by grace are you saved through faith and that not of yourselves it is the gift of god not of works lest any man should boast for we are his workmanship created in christ jesus unto good works so christ jesus is the starting point god bless you come to jesus christ